Christ is risen. Good morning and happy Easter and welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. For those who are online today, wherever this morning finds you, and for all of us here at church, uh, we gather to hear that death is not the end. And um, before we can take it all in, we need to hear this story again from the Gospel of Matthew. And there is a lot of drama. There's an earthquake. There's an angel that sits on that stone and waits. And there is the women who come to prepare a body for death. And instead of death, they find life. And you will note that everyone says they were terrified, they were filled with great joy. It's both of those things. What does resurrection mean? And then to receive that gift with joy. So however you come today, God's spirit is moving and we trust that spirit to land on your heart with that word that you need to hear that continues to form us and shape us as a community as we proclaim God's love through Jesus Christ. If you are online, everything that you will need for the service, you will find on the screen for us here at church. Everything that you will need is um, in the bulletin. And we've pulled out all the stops with the organ and the brass and with prayers and uh, music and scripture today to proclaim Christ is risen. So I invite you now, as you are able, to please stand as we begin with the Easter litany. The earth is shaking. The tomb is before us. It's bright as lightning, blinding as the sun reflecting off snow. But we need not tremble, we need not become like the dead. because the tomb is empty and we are called First then to go with joy. No, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Oh 
living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Help us choose to keep faith with them, that our witness may be bold and our love deep and our eyes open to your movement in the world. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture is from Jeremiah, chapter 31. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The plants shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. 
Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. What do you see when you look at a simple tray of cheese and crackers? I realize this is kind of a strange question to be asking on Easter morning when your thoughts are already wandering to brunch and Easter egg hunts, but hear me out. One afternoon, a man went to see a dear friend and his wife who were both getting on in years. His friend's wife in particular was struggling and in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. He was so sad to notice that she was asking him the same questions over and over again. Finally, she asked, would you like some cheese and crackers? Well, the man immediately jumped up to help, but her husband warned him off with a shake of the head as if to say, let her do this one final thing for you. She returned with a tray of carefully arranged cheese and crackers, napkins and small plates, stopping in front of them as they took their share. The man, author Parker Palmer, saw that tray of cheese and crackers and offered that it was communion. It was the bread of life. It was the wine of love. It was cups flowing over. Never, he wrote, has a cathedral seen a moment more holy than this. How is it possible to see the loss of a beloved's memory and a simple act of hospitality as a cathedral of the holy? Perhaps, in part, the choice to see is ours to make. The resurrection story in Matthew's gospel is all about seeing When given the opportunity, what will the disciples choose to see? What will we choose to see? The Marys are deeply grieving the death of Jesus and none the less choose to go to the tomb to see. Unlike the guards who faint, the women see the angel as a messenger leading them to more seeing. Come see the place where Jesus laid, the messenger says. Then go on to Galilee where you will see him again. It was a choice, wasn't it, that they would go to try to see him again. And they go, 
and they do see him, though they see him in a new way now. These women, these women are the unsung heroes of the Easter story, and they get forgotten. There's so many points at which the women could have chosen not to take the next step to see the truth. Some of you, I'm sure, are familiar with a certain wisdom about marriage that says staying in love is a choice. I know, I know, as my husband will tell me, the wisdom only goes so far. Well, as I dwelled in the Easter story this week, I couldn't shake the thought that seeing the risen Christ at work in this weary world through the power of the Spirit is a choice each and every day in times of joy and in times of pain and grief and fear. And it's so hard in all the times in between. Like the Marys and the rest of the disciples and the great cloud of witnesses and saints of our faith, we all have this choice to see or to try to see. Many of you know that I'm a second career pastor, and so I have to be vulnerable with you and honest and say that it took me decades to choose the resurrection. I dabbled around the edges of faith. I was a perpetual visitor of churches. Um, I never chose to commit to one community to see what I would experience for a long time. And for a long time, I believed that faith was the accumulation of evidence. And so I turned to smart books, and I turned to classes, and turned to degrees to build up this life that would deliver understanding. And this was all good and faithful and part of my own journey. But at a certain point, I had to put a stake in the ground with these women. I had to use my voice, and I had to choose resurrection hope over everything else. So as the dawn breaks from on high upon us this Easter morning, we all have, including me, another opportunity to reflect on what we choose to see when we look inside that empty tomb. Because the same forces that killed Jesus tried to tell the story a different way. They tried to tell the story that someone came by night while the guards were sleeping and stole Jesus' body away. And I think these are the same forces that continue to try to convince us that to keep faith with a couple of grieving women is a fool's errand. When you try to tell them that Jesus, Jesus lives on and that grace and mercy and abundance exist for all, these same forces will tell you that it makes more sense to fear difference. It makes more sense to live for yourself. It doesn't make sense to live for the good of community. And when you tell these same forces about your great pain or your loss or your grief, they will say, see, a loving God is a work of fiction. You're all on your own. When you show concern over the number of people living unhoused in our community, or concern over the latest of school shootings, they will say, this is just the way it is. There's no use in writing injustice or protecting the vulnerable among us. When you point out there are all these helpers and advocates and people of good faith at work in this world, they will tell you that these efforts are too little too late. Whoever your whole self is, is somehow not right, and whatever gift you have to offer the world will, will never be enough. I could go on and on, 
that the same forces that killed Jesus on Good Friday, they are alive and well today, and they are threatened by the promise of resurrection. I have a feeling, though, that you are here this morning because you have felt an invitation from God to see differently. I'm not talking about the kind of seeing where the glass is always half full. I'm not talking about putting on rose-colored glasses or watching Hallmark movies that always resolve in a happy ending. Can you imagine the disciples, how they were feeling after seeing Jesus raised from the dead? Yes, they were joyful, but it was a mix of emotions for sure. They had to put their lives back together and somehow figure out how to do what Jesus was telling them to do without him. And now even death was something they couldn't quite count on. So no, I don't think the resurrection was a happy ending that returned everything back to the way things were. But it was an upending. It was an upending that a people desperately needed to see. They needed to see that God in death and in life and everywhere in between was with us and that God is continually providing another beginning and another chance for grace and mercy and love to be known. And here's the other gospel truth that takes my breath away. Remember the earthquake that Pastor Beth mentioned, the shining white angel descending from heaven, the guards struck unconscious, this larger-than-life drama being played out at the tomb. We might easily mistake, if we weren't listening close, closely enough, that this was all so Jesus could rise from the dead. But by the time all of this happened, Jesus was already gone. He was walking out ahead of his disciples. He was making plans to see, him again, see them again. He was making plans to strengthen their courage and their faith and to send them out to invite others to see. So no, the stone wasn't rolled away by the angel to let Jesus out of the tomb. The sto stone was rolled away to let the witnesses in. And we are these witnesses. Whether we choose to go in and see or not, the God of truth and mercy and forgiveness is on the loose, providing us with another chance to see. And if we don't see another chance after that, so my prayer for you and for me and for Mount Olivet on this Easter morning is simple, and that is that we would be a people who choose to try to see the risen Jesus on the loose in the world. And when we do see, I pray that we will go and tell what we have seen to another. So rejoice and be glad. Christ is risen. God has always chosen you and this weary world. So now, what do you say? Amen. And as we sing.
around us, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. For those who are online, feel free to type in your piece in the comments and we'll connect with you there for us at church to both extend and receive peace from each other. continue now um, with the offering. You will see a Venmo code in your bulletin. And kids, this basket up front goes to feed hungry people. And I just want to know, you just never know what our combined generosity can do as a community. Over this last year, we just paid off a million dollar mortgage. So you just never know what God's up to. So we continue now with the offering. Oh! 
Said the angel, he is not here, he is risen as he said, why seek ye the living, we know here upon the bed, for the angels roll the stone away, for the angels roll the stone away, for so many steps so said, touch me not, Mary, but go on ahead of me. Go and tell all my disciples to meet me in Galilee. We just the stone away. We just the stone away. Together, generous God, in this meal you offer your very self, and we give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of the bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out into service for the world. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. God, for your unfolding story since the beginning of time, and for how your spirit of love moves stones, brings life from death, and gives us courage to take the next step and witness to your love. Oh God, your intention from so long ago has been to come and break in at dawn, to find us sitting in the shadows of death and despair, to break open the grave and to be with us. And so your spirit continues to gather your people near and online to give us your real presence made known in simple elements like bread and wine, nourishing and shaping and meeting us on the way just as Jesus promised. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, send your spirit on us in this meal as we move from death to life. And we pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for all of us at this table, however you come today, wherever your faith is. It's a simple prayer. Open our hands and our hearts 
God, help me see again. And when you can't see because you're stuck or you're wondering or if you're in grief, hear again that the stone has been moved away, that Jesus is already ahead of us. And so for all the ways that you will see that resurrection, whatever time that will be, it is true. And if you are online, wherever you are receiving communion today, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us here at church, we will have three stations, two up the center aisle, one up this side aisle. The wafer is gluten-free, wine is red, grape juice is lighter in color. So please come forward now. This feast of love is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives, all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we now pray together at the end of each prayer petition. I will say, um, risen Christ, if you would please respond to our prayer. So we come to you now, O God, and open our hearts and our minds and our lives to your love and forgiveness. God of love, on this Easter morning, we hear again that through the cross, death is not the end. Help us see, help us notice your presence in the ordinary details of our lives you are creating in the world at every moment, leading us to new places, putting back together our broken pieces to connect us with each other. We pray especially for your creating and healing presence to be in areas of conflict throughout the world and the scattered, unsettled places of our own lives. Risen Christ. And good and gracious God, we pray for those in need. Give shelter to the homeless. Guide the unemployed to work. Protect those who suffer abuse or neglect and bless the poor. Bring friends to the lonely, food to the hungry, sobriety to the addicted, and reconciliation to the estranged. Bring healing to all who are sick, comfort all who are grieved, and love and peace to those who are dying, risen Christ. And God, we pray for faith, faith to trust when we doubt and when we don't know what comes next and when we are in deep grief. Remind us that you hold us in life and you hold us in death and that you do have a plan, a purpose, and a future for each of us and for the world, risen Christ. And God, for all of us gathered here today, free us from fear and renew us in faith. Send your spirit of resurrection to set us upright, to live and to love. Help us be your hands and feet in schools and at work, neighborhoods, family, friendships, and everywhere else you would have us go, risen Christ. And now with the faith, faithful saints of every time and place, we offer these prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It has just been um, true joy to worship with you together. And as we send you off um, to all the places where you will settle in and uh, fill your bellies, uh, to be with those people that you love, um, and the reminder um, that God is still up to something in the world, always going ahead, walking alongside of us. May you feel that, that grace, that joy in your love today. Um, you will see these amazing flowers in our chancel area. Uh, many of you have given these flowers in memory or in honor of someone. You are welcome to come and pick that up after church. Uh, we will be here until 1230, um, and I think you are already here, so you don't need to know, but just in case you need to scoot, the office is closed tomorrow, but you can pick it up on Tuesday as well. And um, will you help me in just thanking the amazing mu musicians around us and our tech people and all our um, people that help make this worship service happen. <laughs> I like to say on Easter, it's all the smells and the bells. So I invite you to stand as we close in song.
May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen you with the Spirit and bless you now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.